Welcome back folks. Today we are going to be diving into some information about pure substances and mixture analysis. Mostly we're going to be focusing on empirical and molecular formulas along with a little bit of a combustion analysis. So let's go ahead and dive on in. So with this particular video, hopefully you will be able to explain the relationships between elemental composition and empirical and molecular formulas. Long story short, we're doing empirical molecular formula calculations. And then lastly, explain the relationships between elemental composition and components of a mixture. So there's some terms that I want to talk about here before we dive in. Uh, the first one you may not be familiar with is the term formula unit. And that simply just refers to the empirical formula of an ionic compound. Now remember, ionic compounds are made up of a metal plus a non-metal, okay? Whereas molecules are just all non-metal substances. Empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of atoms in any compound or molecule. So for example, CH2O is the empirical formula for a variety of compounds. It's the lowest whole number ratio. The molecular formula is the exact formula, C6H12O6. So the molecular formula is the exact formula. So in this instance, we have glucose. The empirical formula for C6H12O6 is CH2O because it is the lowest whole number ratio. 6, 12, and 6 can be reduced to 1, 2, and 1. All this information can be calculated using lab data, and you can even do analyses on this to determine the purity of a substance. It'll give you information about molar masses. Uh, basically, you kind of compare some of the information to see which masses are higher. We'll look at some of those questions later on. So just a quick reminder in case anybody has forgotten, in order to solve the empirical formula, we follow these steps. If uh, you're given grams, you'll need to convert those information to moles. If given percentages, assume that they are grams and convert to moles. So for example, if it tells you that there's 55% oxygen and 45% carbon, just change those percentages to grams and then convert to moles. When you get all of your mole numbers, you want to divide by the smallest mole number you get. So if you have three numbers and uh, you have the smallest number, you're going to divide all three of them by that smallest number. When you get done, this is the whole number ratio of the subscripts in the compound. So this is going to give you the empirical formula. Now you can do a little bit of rounding. I wouldn't do anything beyond maybe two to three hundredths of a decimal place rounding. So if you get 2.97, you'd round that up to three. But anything like 2.5, 2.33, anything with those types of decimals, you cannot round. So you're gonna have to multiply all of those numbers by the smallest number that will get you a whole number. Okay. You'll see what I mean in one of our practice sample problems. A compound was analyzed and found to contain 13.5 grams of calcium, 10.8 grams of oxygen, and 0.675 grams of hydrogen. What is the empirical formula for the compound? So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and just write all these out one more time. So we got 13. of hydrogen. So they're already given to us in grams, not percentages, so we're good there. Next step is convert to moles. So to do that, grams goes on the bottom, moles on top, calcium, oxygen, and hydrogen. Let's do our math. First one we get 0.337 moles. Point six seven five moles. And point six six eight moles. So we have everything in moles. Now we divide by the smallest mole number. So the smallest is 0.337. So we're going to divide all these by 0.337. And again, if you get a number that's close, feel free to round. So for our formula, we have Ca 
O2, H2. Now, we're smart kids here. We know that that is not how that is written. Okay, so you may need to do a little bit of analysis of the compound to see if it even makes sense or something that you've seen before. You know that this is CaOH2. Okay. Simple enough on how to go through that. First step, convert to moles. Divide by the smallest number of moles to get into your whole number ratio. And then those are your subscripts. Pretty straightforward, guys. Let's move on. So the next step would be to solve for the molecular formula. And in order to do so, we need to calculate the empirical formula first. Then we need to find the molar mass of the empirical formula. This is going to be very important. The next step is that we will take the molecular molar mass and divide by the empirical molar mass to get a whole number factor. You're going to take that factor and multiply all of the subscripts of the empirical formula to get the molecular formula. So it's really only one more step. Get the empirical molar mass, take the molecular molar mass, and divide by the empirical molar mass. Get that factor, multiply your subscripts. Let's try a practice problem. NutraSweet is 57.14% cal... Oh my god, calcium. 57.14% carbon, 6.16% hydrogen, 9.52% nitrogen, and 27.18% oxygen. Calculate the empirical and molecular formula. So, this time we're given percentages. So, if you remember, we assume those percentages are given to us as grams. So, we're going to start with 57.14 grams of carbon. 6.16 grams of hydrogen, 9.52 grams of nitrogen, and 27.18 grams of oxygen. Convert all these to moles. A lot of writing. Divide by the smallest number. So notice that when we get done, we actually don't get all whole numbers. Remember, I told you that if you don't have whole numbers at the end of this, you might have to multiply by a factor to get them two whole numbers. Well, since we have 0.5 here, if I multiply all of my coefficients by two, I'm sorry, all my subscripts by two, I get the empirical formula. So you have C14. H18 and 2O5. So this is my empirical formula. Now I need to find the molar mass of this to help me determine the molecular formula. We'll go through and do my calculation. What I actually find is that the molar mass of this is 294.30 grams per mole. So in this instance, the molar mass of my empirical formula is the same as the molar mass of my molecular formula. If that's the case, then this is not only the empirical formula, but it is also the molecular formula as well. So they can be the same. Now if this number were, say, half of this, if the empirical molar mass were, say, half of the molecular molar mass, then you would multiply all the coefficients by 2 in order to get your molecular molar mass. Okay, let's move on. The last thing we're going to look at is the combustion of a hydrocarbon and do a combustion analysis. Now remember, combustion of a hydrocarbon involves a carbon and hydrogen molecule reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. So from this, you're going to determine the grams of carbon and hydrogen from your products. You'll be given grams of CO2 and grams of H2O. So you'll need to determine the amount of grams of carbon and hydrogen in those samples. 
Remember that the law of conservation of mass states that the amount of carbon and hydrogen in the products is the same as in the reactants. So once we get that information, we can use those masses then to solve for the empirical formula. Let's do a sample problem. A 1.5 gram sample of hydrocarbon undergoes complete combustion to produce 4.40 grams of CO2 and 2.7 grams of H2O. What is the empirical formula of the compound? Well, the first thing we need to do is to determine how many grams of carbon exist in 4.40 grams of CO2 and how many grams of hydrogen exist in 2.70 grams of H2O. So, start off. grams of CO2. Okay, We're going to convert that to moles of CO2. Now for every mole of CO2, notice the subscript of carbon is just one here, so we would have one mole of carbon. Take that last step, moles of carbon to grams of carbon. We're going to do the same thing for hydrogen. Take grams of H2O. This time, one mole of H2O is going to produce two moles of hydrogen. So now we can calculate the number of grams of carbon and hydrogen. Now that works out really nicely, doesn't it? Because if I take my grams of carbon and add it to my grams of hydrogen, I get the mass of the sample. What that tells you is that there are no other elements that are found in that hydrocarbon. Sometimes hydrocarbons contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. And if that were the case, these two numbers added together would not equal that number. But if it didn't, but then you would know how much oxygen there would be because you'd subtract the grams of carbon and the grams of hydrogen from the 1.50 sample. Okay, and We don't need to do that here because, again, there's no oxygen present. So from this, then, you would do an empirical formula calculation. So we're going to get these both to moles. Divide by the smallest mole number. So my empirical formula is going to be CH3. Okay. 
So again, kind of break that down into two separate steps there. Uh, we'll do some more practice with that analysis in class. Okay, but keep in mind, we need to get the number of grams of carbon and carbon dioxide, the number of grams of hydrogen in H2O. From that information, then we can do an empirical formula calculation. All right, so this video was a bit lengthy, but hopefully I'll be able to cut out actually a lot of the stuff. There's a lot of dead space in here. My cat got in the way a couple times, you know, life happened. But hopefully you get the student learning objectives. We'll see you in class next time, guys. Talk to you later. This is Jay Lambio. Bye-bye.